this flowchart describes. So we will start and we will ask the user to type W to win. We'll then check if they actually did type W. If they did, then we will display you win and we'll go back and ask them again to type W to win. And this loop will continue so long as they continue to type W. If they don't type W, we want to display game over and stop. So very simple game, very simple to win. Let's see how simple it is to program. If we scroll down and we'll see the code that's already written for us, we've got three blanks to fill in. We've already got the label and go to keywords there. So all we need to fill in after these is the actual name that we're gonna use for our label. We've also got a blank here between answer and W in our if statement. And let's start here because we should know this already from last lesson. If we look back at the flowchart, we want this to be true if their input is equal to W is equal to. So that's going to use the double equal sign. So I'm gonna fill in the double equal sign here. And now all we have to do is fill in these other two blanks by coming up with a name for our label. This can be anything we want. We know that it has to start with a full stop, so we'll put that in right away. And then we can come up with any name that we like for this. It follows similar rules to naming variables. It needs to be something relatively short that describes what the label is for. In this case, for such a short program, we could probably use something generic like repeat or again, but we could also be a little more specific. Because this is a game and this label describes the start of the game, let's go with game start. And I could just write it like this as one word, and that would be fine, but I can actually do something else which I can do with variable names and with label names. We know that we can't use a space because it has to be one word, but there's a common way of representing a space without actually having a space in our code, and that's to use an underscore. So that's done by holding down shift and pressing the key that's in between zero and the plus symbol on your keyboard at the top right. Now we have a label name that clearly reads as game start, two separate words, which is more grammatically correct and arguably looks a little nicer than one big word that's conjoined together and it still fulfills all of the rules that we need to follow when we're naming variables and labels and things like that. We don't have a number at the start, we're not using any special keywords, and we don't have any spaces in the middle of our variable name. So now that we've named our label, we also need to put it down here in the go to. We know that this is gonna be the exact same thing because up here, label is creating the label and go to is saying actually go to that label. So these obviously need to match. So for this blank, I'm just gonna fill in game underscore start the same way that I've written up here. Now let's run the game and see if that's working. So type W to win. I'll type W, press enter, you win. Type W to win. I'll try it again and again and again. And this seems to be working just fine. Now if I type something that is not W, the game should stop immediately and we should get the game over text. So let's try F and indeed we get game over right away. So that's looking pretty good. Let's scroll down and check our requirements. We're running without errors, check. We're asking the user to enter W in order to win and then displaying the text you win if they do. Check, and if they type anything else, the program should print game over and stop. Check. We've used the label and go to keywords to create the loop and we've named the label whatever we want and we have made sure our go to is exactly the same. We can also see the example here actually uses the same letter that we used for the negative case. So we've got WWW and F and that is all looking pretty good. So that is the easiest game in the world complete. Definitely the easiest game to win and also pretty easy to program.